All right, guys, welcome back to our world outdoors. So today we're gonna to be making my dehydrated sloppy joes. It's super simple. It's trail tested. You saw it in the Oil Creek video. If you didn't check that out, you should really go check it out because that was an epic adventure. But after trying it on the trail, it was so amazing. And my lovely wife packed out a whole pack of buns for them. Sloppy Joe's in those shelters out in Oil Creek. Oh, it was the bomb. So this is super simple. I make it a little different than what you would think though, because I've been working on a new way to dehydrate meat in order to make it so it's not so gravelly or hard or stringy. So I will make a full blown video about dehydrating meat later, but right now we're going to work on making the sloppy joes. So step one is you're going to need your meat. Now we're going to use some pork here. Uh, you can use hamburger. You can use pretty much anything. This is just what we had. Missy brought this back from some family in Kentucky. So that's what our base is going to be. You're going to need a can of sloppy joe mix and you're going to need something to cook it in. Now we are not going to put this in a pan and cook it. Okay. So the choices are for this one, it's going to be a pressure cooker, like an Insta pot, something like that because it's frozen and I'm in a hurry, but you can also do it in like a slow cooker or even like a rice cooker and keep setting it on oatmeal or you can just boil it stovetop but we want to submerge it in water and cook it all right and then we will break it up i personally use a potato masher but you can use a spoon but once we get it fully cooked we'll smash it up and then we'll go to the next steps so let's get started here so we're going to take our meat and just as simply boom we're going to put some water in as long as it's above the meat and not going to fall below the level, that's all that matters. But it needs to all be submerged completely. All right. Put our lid on here. Well, maybe we're going to put our lid on. I think it's mad at me today. Boom. All right. So. On this one, we put it there on beef pork, hit start. So in 35 minutes, this will be done. I will bring you back and I will show you the next step because this is super simple. So stay with us. And we're back. So it's been about 35 minutes. The meat has completely cooked. Of course, you should leave the pressure cooker to cool down on its own and make it handleable but of course you guys know me i'm not the smartest not the sharpest knife in the drawer so what i'm doing now is i'm taking this potato masher and just basically smashing up the meat in here I'm breaking it apart if any of you have ever had a loose meat sandwich it's just basically done like this they break up the hamburger after it's been boiled so just a quick once over. You can sit here and do this with a spoon. It just takes longer. And don't worry about it if you don't get it all the way on the first shot because we actually do this twice. So I get the worst of it broke up. And then we're going to see if I can do this without burning the heck out of myself. So what we do now is we take this out and we're going to strain off all the water and oil and make a big mess so your wife gets mad. They always like that. That's their favorite part when you make messes. But anyways, we're going to strain all of it off. And the longer you let this sit here and strain off, it's actually the better it is. But in the interest of time for the video, we're gonna move it along. Okay. Now I do want you to know that if you wanted to, you can make an excellent soup with the stock that's left over. If you throw in a bunch of vegetables in there, I mean, especially if you're doing something like chicken, these stocks that are left over, you can put it back in here later, add a bunch of other ingredients and make an excellent soup. All right, so I'm gonna make a bigger mess. 
that's what we've got. That's our pork. Like I said, you can use whatever meat you want as long as it's ground. And we're going to put it back into this hot container. All right. And then we're going to add our manwich. Now I have considered trying the thick and hearty, but I haven't bought a can yet. Wow, I just got that all over me. Anyways, so I am not going to put the whole can in this because this is shy of a pound, but also because I'm not going to let this cool down. Now you should put this in there, mix it in, let it cool down, it'll kind of cook into it. But I'm not going to do that, so I'm going to put a little less in there because we're trying to move it along for a video. I am actually wearing this stuff. I got it all over me. So a little bit of salt, a little bit of pepper. You guys know me. I like to back season everything. And we're going to add just a little more sauce. Okay. So like I said, now you would usually just let this sit here and completely cool and thicken, which will make it easier to put in the dehydrator, but in the interest of time, we're not doing that. So that's what we've got. A nice pork version of Sloppy Joe. And now we're going to get some stuff out of the way and we'll be back and load it up in the dehydrator. And on to the next step. So the next step is we need to dehydrate this. So we're going to take our dehydrator here. We're going to use parchment paper. So I took parchment paper, traced it with the trays, cut it out. And then all we do and this is another reason to let it thicken because it won't run off and make a mess. But as I said, we're on a time schedule here. So we're going to put this in here and we're going to spread it out flat. A pound usually does, I don't know, one and a half trays, not making it too thick. So that should tell you I would make it in bigger batches. I've already made a big batch of this, so I'm just making a smaller batches for you guys to see. And I'm making a huge mess. You know what? I'm going to go ahead and do it at that level for that. I'm going to show you. don't want to spell it, but spread it out it doesn't have to be perfect this parchment paper will save your life when you're trying to clean it up it also makes it so it doesn't fall through the holes as i said this is slightly less than a pound so So now, let me explain how we do this. We put it in there, put our lid on it. Now, we're going to let this start to dehydrate. When you can peel it from the paper, all right, you're going to be over halfway done. Peel it off the paper, flip it upside down, and let it finish. You want this stuff dry. You want to be able to break it in your hand like this. I will show you when we come back in the morning because I'm going to let it run overnight. But you want all the moisture out of it. Now, this is not shelf stable. You will have to keep it in your freezer. But it should be good, I'd say, probably comfortably to me. Three days out in the trail, I would be very comfortable. Unless it's the dead, dead, dead of summer, then I would cut it back to two days as long as it's in an enclosed container like a jar or a Ziploc bag. So I will get this dehydrated. We will bring you back in the morning, show you it, bag it, and of course, do the best part, which is to sample it. And I'll show you how easy this stuff rehydrates. It'll blow your mind. So 
I will see you in the morning. All right, good morning, guys. So it's the next morning. The dehydrator's been going for like 10, 10 and a half hours. Now, every dehydrator runs at a different temperature or can be set at a different temperature, so your times may vary, but I'm gonna show you how you know when they're done. That said, it's still early. I already got up, cleaned up some stuff, did a few dishes, that way hopefully my wife won't kill me when she gets up. Now she's already stated she likes how the house smells. So, let's take a look. Now, like I told you guys, halfway through you wanna flip them over. And it did it all in one big chunk, no problem. So that's what it looks like. All right. This tray down here. Whoop. But you saw how easy that broke. So just to show you how you know it's done. When you pick it up in your hand. And I'll do it so you can hear it hopefully. So after you turn off your dehydrator for about five minutes, if you can crush it up in your hand, that makes the crackling noise, it's done. Now for storage, it goes in the freezer. So we're gonna bust it up. Generally speaking, you could just throw it in big chunks in here for storage. I just like to bust it up. That way it's easier for me to break it out in portions when we go on trail. Now that said, when you go on trail, we use a peanut butter jar. You can use whatever you want. But I find that about three quarters to a full peanut butter jar like this is the perfect size for me to have a meal because I can either eat it straight the way it is after I rehydrate it just with a spoon or you can bring out bread and stuff and put it on there. But you're gonna want a good amount of this stuff, all right? So fill the jar completely up, or we'll bring you a big old baggie so you can rehydrate whatever amount you want at a time and use it like that. Now, now that I made a mess again, the fun part. So when rehydrating this, you'd wanna put water just over it. I mean, it, it takes, it doesn't take as much water as you would think, but you can always add more water, so that's not an issue. If you overwater it, you can pour some off right away because you'll know it's been too much. But let me show you what it looks like here. That's really good. Now you want the water as hot as possible. And if I was going to do a jar like this, I would do it 15 minutes on the rehydrate. But that's just me. My dog Apollo is sneaking in wanting a bite. So hold on. Come here. Come here, old man. Come here. You're kind of big for this. Okay. So, Apollo. Is it approved? Is it approved, huh? Is it good? All right. There you go, buddy. Yep. No, you don't get any more. You don't get any more. Now the other one's coming. Come here, Molly. Come here. Oh, boy, you're a big girl. Come here, big girl. All right. Is it approved? Yes, good girl. Oh, big girl. So they're all excited. They're having a good time. I'm going to get this bagged up before they go nuts. Get them fed because, shh, shh. I'm doing a video, shh. Anyways, <laughs> so I'm going to get them fed because they haven't had their morning breakfast yet. And Molly gets a little whimpery when she doesn't get to eat. That said, 
please go down, make sure you hit the subscribe button, hit the notification bell, and leave a comment. Let us know what you want to see us dehydrate or what you think of this when you get a chance to try it. I've got to get this mess cleaned up from my wife gets up, feed the dogs, and get on with my day. So I'm going to need a lot more coffee to get going here. We will see you guys in the next one. You guys ready to eat? Well, let's eat.